Hey, my name is Sean Harris, and on this video, we're going to be covering personal evangelism. This is directed at your life groups, community groups, for people that maybe are hesitant to share the gospel because they just don't know how to take that step from praying for somebody to actually sharing the gospel with someone. So we're going to get started with some questions from my expert panel, and hopefully this video will help you out. Looking and seeing opportunities to share the gospel, um, first of all has to come out of um, your time with Jesus and I think that's necessary because you can't share about someone that you don't know for yourself so you can memorize answers you can memorize facts or um, the stories but if the Lord is not changing your heart um, you're not gonna be able to share genuinely with others and that's what people want is they want people who are being real about what they believe and Jesus does change lives and I think believing that is um, key, but also just really practically, um, I'm a college student, so um, there's a lot of time in between class. People are waiting around, um, and I think, I mean, just getting down nitty gritty, putting up my cell phone, turning off the music, um, putting away the distractions, and trying to meet the people that I'm having class with um, is a big way that I look for opportunities to share the gospel. Because um, through those small interactions, you start learning about their story and where they come from and their hurts. And, and a lot of people have been hurt by the church. Um, so just jumping in on those opportunities to meet people is a really good way to share the gospel. So the way I see that is there's really a couple aspects to that. One is we need to be praying about opportunities to share the gospel. And God will present those to you when you pray for those. But also more than just praying you need to be listening and observant to your surroundings and the people that you're talking to because life's happening all around you and the people that you work with the people that you meet at the grocery store the restaurant family members things are going on in their life and you can pick up on those subtle things that then you can then expound upon to begin sharing the gospel just based on listening to what's going on in their life Recently I was on a flight from Atlanta to Florida and usually when I get on a plane I like to just sit there and mind my own business and read a book or something like that and to be by myself. Well, I sat down on the flight and this guy beside me just immediately started talking to me. Uh, started talking about family and work and extracurricular activities and he actually brought up the question, do you have any religious beliefs? And it was like the door just swung wide open to begin sharing with him. And at the end of the day, we got, to, got down to the point to where I realized that he's not a believer and I shared the gospel with him and I called for a response and he, he wasn't ready to make that decision at that point. But it was one of those situations where it was just a simple conversation that started to open that door and allowed me the opportunity just to share a little bit about what the Lord's done in my life with this individual that I didn't know from the, the guy on the other side of me. So. Uh, not only was I able to share with him, but the people around me were able to hear what I was sharing with him as well. And I'm not sure what kind of fruit that's going to bear, but I was, uh, I was fortunate to have that opportunity to share with a complete stranger. Um, the best way that I sort of look for opportunities to share the gospel is I just listen for a need. Um, almost everybody in every conversation that you have with them will share a need with you, whether it's um, a sick relative or a financial need or you know they're just not in a happy place in their life um, those are really good opportunities to um, share with them that, that there is hope and and the other the other thing that I do is I always ask questions um, I always engage them in well how did you how were you raised or how what do you believe in or, or what do you do you think there is a God or do you have you heard of Jesus or do you know what Jesus did for you and so um, those open-ended questions to allow them to sort of tell you back what they believe so that you can say well let me let me tell you the truth let me let me tell you what Jesus did do um, and that's sort of how I I just always really try to listen listen for a need and um, ask questions a local story I'd like to share with you uh, happened one day after class um, we had our final exam and just hanging out and talking and I had, had several classes with uh, these two girls and I mean just small talk what are their interests what's their major you know what do they want to do with that their life story and um, the topic of religion came up um, just because I've seen that theme with a lot of college students is they're usually searching um, for something to put their hope in their identity in and just curious and it usually comes up some sort of religion and 
we started talking about philosophy and all these different world beliefs and it the door was wide open to share about um, why Christianity is different and why the gospel changes lives um, so I dug deeper into the the topics of um, all these other religions are you know come and do this and come and change this about yourself but um, in the gospel God came to us and in no other religion is that the case and um, I don't think these two girls had really ever thought about that before and it really got them thinking like wow that really is different and um, that is life-changing because it's not this mind high and mighty God that you know has all these demands on his people um, to reach him but that he would humble himself enough to come to us um, to save us and um, go through everything that we go through so um, we can have that more intimate relationship with him. So, As a stay-at-home homeschool mom, the majority of the crowd that I'm surrounded by 90% of the time are believers. Um, so for me, um, I've used that as an excuse before, but um, for me, I really um, just have to think outside of the box. I have to um, pay attention to the people around me at the grocery store, um, the clerk that's checking me out, or um, we all know, the, the fact of the matter is, we all know people that don't know Jesus, whether that is our distant relatives that we don't see very often, um, the people that live around us, the people that we shop next to in the grocery store. Um, there's people everywhere, and I could easily use the excuse that, well, I don't see anybody, um, but I really try hard to um, really search those people out and make an effort to um, put myself in situations where I am around people at the gym, um, in the classes that I take, that um, I can share the gospel with and that I can um, share my story with. Another thing I think we have to consider is there's no right or wrong way when we talk about sharing the gospel. So many of the things we share today and I think about personal experiences or one-on-one -on -one relationships when it, it, it can be very uncomfortable, it's very direct, it's just me and the individual I'm sharing with. But um, as a parent, as a parent of four kids, I think um, my, my wife and I spent time thinking about how can we reach out to other people? Um, how can we show our kids what it looks like um, to share the gospel? How can we provide an environment, a, a way for um, some of our other um, friends that, that we know have a relationship with the Lord or, or um, followers of Christ, a way for them to invite people to start that conversation. Um, one example we've done is for a number of years we've hosted an Easter egg hunt um, at, at our house and that that gives the opportunity. Um, the, these individuals have come to, to our house. Um, basically I, I have the, um, the opportunity, the right, the, um, the opening to share exactly what I believe um, and then um, to, to see what, what that does in people's lives, to give them an invitation um, to both know the truth, to come to church, and then also open the door for um, conversations even with kids and with the other um, the parents that have attended about what it means um, to, to truly know the Lord, to depend on Him, um, and to have Him as the Lord of your life. Sometimes sharing the gospel um, can be intimidating, but a good place to start is by sharing your story with others in your life. Um, and just remembering how faithful Jesus was to change your heart and change your life and make you more like Him and believing that He can do that in other people's lives too, that um, it's not up to us to save them, it's up to us to be obedient um, and watch how Jesus changes their lives. We've actually heard a lot of good information. I think a hang up, I think a hang up for people is is actually sharing the gospel and um, one of the things that's really helped helped me is um, I try to keep things really simple and when, when Jesus was asked what's the most important thing it's love God the second most important thing is love your your neighbor and the way that that, that you can do that is by praying for people that's a good way to love your neighbor and to love God uh, but you, the, the point that I want to make is oftentimes we don't pray 
for the person with the person. And I think that's a, an easy way to open up the, the door to be able to, to share the gospel with, uh, with someone. Uh, and what I mean by that is I, I know that you, you've got maybe three people that you're praying for, people that you're praying that, that you'll have a chance to, to lead them to the Lord. But what I'm talking about is to start a conversation with somebody. Almost everybody will accept prayer. Even non-believers are open for you to literally pray for them. So if somebody's sick or somebody has a need, um, oftentimes I find a door opener for that gospel message will be, can I pray for you? And they'll usually say, yeah, yeah, I'll take your prayer. And once you do that, you can segue into a gospel message. So as you're praying for people, or if you have a chance to actually pray with someone, you're wanting a response from somebody. It's as easy as, as saying, hey, tell me about your relationship with the Lord. Do you have a relationship with the Lord? Most people are going to be honest with you. There are going to be people that will be like, you know, man, I, I just don't have one. Or, or possibly they'll say, well, that's not what it should be. But it, that's how you start the conversation. And I think um, our, our biggest obstacle sometimes as Christians is just not loving somebody enough to pray for them and just not loving somebody enough to share the gospel with them. And, and you just want to get that conversation uh, going. And, and that's the easiest way, I think, sometimes is just, just pray for them, pray with them. I'm Bree. I'm a college student and I'm a missionary. I'm Eric. My home and my neighborhood are my mission field. I'm Angela. I'm a stay-at-home mom and my home and community are my mission field. My name is Dustin. I'm an engineer and my mission field is Eastman Chemical Company.